Hey, welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick, a Leonard version of quick uh, of proof of the quadratic formula. So what I've really been hurt hearing me say over the past few videos is that there's really three techniques we, we actually use uh, to, to solve quadratics. We use the square root method, uh, we use factoring, and then we use the quadratic formula. So why are there four techniques? The completing the square, we rarely, rarely use that. Why? Well, number one, what the completing the square does is it, it gives you what the square root method is based on. So when you're, um, when you're doing the square root method, a lot of times it's based on someone who's already done the completing the square idea. So is it valuable? Absolutely. The quadratic formula does not work without that completing the square idea behind it. So, but the problem is, is that as you learn, man, we just did an over hour video on completing the square because sometimes um, teachers, even me, make you learn completing the square because it is valuable later. Like with lots of functions we do completing the square on, um, even though we're not solving for x-intercepts. So is it valuable to learn? Yes. Is it valuable to have it, like always in the front of your mind when you're doing quadratics? No, no, it's not. So here's the process I want you to go through when you are solving quadratic equations for x-intercepts. Number one, get on one side in order of first term positive set equals zero and see if the square root method works. If it doesn't, try factoring. If it doesn't, pretty much skip completing the square unless it's one of the really, really easy ones, and then you go to quadratic formula. Why is because what the com what completing the square does, if we do it on a general function, a general quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c in this, this general form, standard form, and we do completing the square, it's going to give us a formula, and that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to show you where the quadratic formula comes from in terms of completing the square, so that we never really have to do completing the square again, unless, unless you're forced to by, by some specific um, thing that's saying you, you got to do it. So here's the way it works. I'm going to walk you through it, and then we'll have this very nice formula we'll practice in another video. So let's, just, let's suppose that we want to find x-intercepts. So what does a quadratic formula work for with? It works with quadratics, and it does exactly one thing. It, find, it finds x-intercepts, zeros or roots, wherever they exist, whether they're imaginary, whether they're um, one solution, so the same solution twice, or whether they are, there's two real solutions, so two actual x-intercepts. So it works all the time. So if factor doesn't work, this is your best friend. Completing the square was a little bit too slow. So here's how we, we go about doing it. We're going to do completing the square exactly the same way I taught you in the last video. So how that worked is we looked at this and said, hey, is the square root method going to work? No. No, it's not because I can isolate a power too, but without x is other places. That's a problem. Is factoring going to work? Maybe. But we know that factoring doesn't work all the time. There's no general way to factor besides this. We're going to make factoring work. How does that happen? Completing the square forces factoring to work for you. Do you remember that? It forces that to happen. And so we're going to force factoring to happen. It's called completing the square. What we did with that is we grouped our x terms. And we held off our constant term. And we're going to do the same exact thing. The next thing we did was we said, you know what? We, we really want the shortcut to work with our A being 1 so that when we develop the factoring, it's very easy to see what we, what we need to have in order to make the factoring work. For that reason, we factor out our A. So if we factor out our A, factoring means divide. So AX squared divided by A is X squared. BX divided by A is B over AX. Well, you notice if we distribute that, that's ax squared, that's, let's see, b over a times a is bx, and then we have this, this spot. Where, what happens in that spot? Well, what we noticed last time, last video was that we really need this to be factorable. If this is going to factor, and if we need to keep this as three terms, this would be my middle term. So if that's my middle term, yeah, right there, bigger. If that's my middle term, we understood that 
man, if, if I want this to be a perfect square trinomial, factor is something that's the same factor times the same factor so they can get a power two. I would need exactly the same numbers here. Now remember, these numbers have to add to this one. They have to add to my middle term. So if these numbers have to be the same, and they have to add to that number, it's going to be exactly half of whatever that value is. So it's half of b over a. How you find half of a fraction is you either divide the numerator by 2, or you multiply the denominator by 2. Now, we don't know what b is, so I'm not going to divide the numerator by 2. I'm going to multiply the denominator. Remember that multiplication and division are Multiplication is the is division by reciprocal, and division is multiplication by reciprocal. It's the same, same concept that you just kind of do in this, a different place. So we would have b over, instead of dividing the numerator, I'm going to multiply the denominator by b over 2a. Hey, b over 2a plus b over 2a is 2b over 2a. That's going to be b over a. The twos are going to cancel. So, well, man, we're very close. So we have, this is a trinomial. It's just missing a piece. I want this to factor as a perfect square. Something times itself. So x plus something and x plus that same thing. So they get a perfect square. That would complete the square. Give me this um, ability to do a complete, the a, um, use square method. So in order for that to happen, though, I've got to have this c actually work. So how c's work? is a times c, one times, that's why I factored a, one times whatever's missing has to go here. But whatever goes here needs to be the multiplication of these two pieces. We understood that from factoring that these two pieces need to add to this and multiply to this. We're creating the c so that that will happen. So let's multiply it. If we know that this needs to be the product of these two numbers, then this needs to be b squared over 4a squared. Do these add to b over a? Yes. Do these multiply to b squared over 4a squared? Yes. It's just that that's, that's missing here. That's what we're going to put in there. Um, by the way, if you didn't watch the last video, the reason why we need this number to be 1 is because these two values multiply to a times c. Well, we're trying to find the c. So if this wasn't 1, we'd have to divide out whatever that number is, and basically that's what the factoring does at the very beginning anyhow. So we divide it out so that we don't have to do it later. So we're going to say, yeah, hey, because that's 1, 1 times c is this number. Since we have 1 divided by 1, this is our c, and we're going to add it right here. Now there's a couple things that we can do with this a. Right now, we could divide here, and here, and here, or we could leave it here and divide it later. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it because that's the technique I showed you in the last video. I'm going to leave it, but there is a little issue. You see, we added b squared over 4a squared, and we're going to have to undo that. Where we added it to, we added it inside this expression. And what we learned last video was that because this is multiplied by some number, we have to undo this with the distribution. So whatever this a is, I would multiply this a times b squared over 4a squared and undo whatever we get. So a times b squared over 4a squared is b squared over 4a. So notice I added b squared over 4a squared, but this would automatically be distributed. That a would cancel out one of those a's. So I'm going to undo that. This says you added, really, you added this value, b squared over 4a. I'm going to undo that. Whatever we do in an equation, we need to undo somewhere, either on opposite sides, which we could have done, or on the same side. And the only reason why I'm choosing the same side is because that's what I showed you in the last video, because that models better what you do later in mathematics when you complete the square inside of function itself without having to set it equal to zero. So it looks a little weird. Why is that not a power two? Why not? Because you really didn't add this, you added, after you distribute, you added b squared over 4a. That's what we're undoing. We just have a couple more things to do. Number one thing, we're going to combine our like terms here. So these are both constants. Notice they're all constants, all our x's are still here. We're going to combine that. In order to combine it, you need a common denominator. So 
we've got an A, we've got an X squared, B over AX, B squared over 4A squared, which we know exactly what that's going to factor as. That's going to be X plus B over 2A and another X plus B over 2A. Minus B squared over 4A plus, plus C. But we also want that C to have a common denominator with 4A. So instead of just C, we're going to give it a common denominator. 4AC over 4A. Remember that if you have an LCD of 4A and this is a denominator of 1, you can Multiply both the numerator and denominator by whatever this is. The LC is 4A. And now that we have a common denominator, we're going to start solving for, for X. So we're going to do a couple things right now. Number one, we know that this is going to factor because we, we made it work. We, we made this out of this factorization. So we know it's going to factor as X plus B over 2A squared. We know that we're going to have an A out front still. We're also going to put this stuff on the other side of our equation. So we're going to add b squared over 4a. We're going to subtract 4ac over 4a. So we've shown that this was factorable. We just, we just factor right now. We know that this completes this factorization. Therefore, we get x minus th plus this and x plus this. We have x plus b over 2a squared. We kept our a, we added b squared over 4a to both sides. We subtracted 4ac over 4a on both sides. And now we're ready, we're almost done. We're gonna divide by a in just a moment. First, we're gonna get that expression on the right-hand side of our equation on one fraction. So b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a. There's only two more things, three more things we're gonna do. Number one, we need to take a square root, but you cannot do it with that a being there. We have to divide both sides by a. When we divide by a, on the left-hand side, divide by a, we're just going to get x plus b over 2a. On the right-hand side, when you divide both sides by a, Dividing by a is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over a. In other words, you multiply your denominator. You're going to get a 4a squared. We're so close. Now we're going to take a square root on both sides with a plus and minus. So square root both sides with a plus and minus. We've been doing this for a long time now. We have x plus b over 2a. On the right-hand side, we got a plus and minus, but notice how the denominator is a perfect square. So our numerator, we're going to leave this as b squared minus 4ac, no problem. Denominator, square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared, that's a square inside of a square root, that's a. Then we're going to subtract b over 2a from both sides. And by the nature of having a really, really convenient common denominator, we get to make this one fraction. And so we get this negative b sign floats up. Plus or minus, sine floats up. Square root of b squared minus 4ac, numerators on the numerator, no problem. All over, remember you keep the denominators the same on uh, adding and subtracting fractions, all over 2a. That right there is a quadratic formula, and if you've never seen it before, well, you probably have seen it somewhere. This is a proof of where it comes, one way to do the proof of where this comes from um, by completing the square. I might give you an optional proof in just a minute. Uh, just to just show you a different way to look at it because sometimes the dividing by a screws people up here So I'll give you a different way to look at it in, in, in just a minute But what that does that does the same thing as the square method the same thing as Factoring and the same thing as completing the square because it is completing the square It's just done it once and for all by leaving these as general coefficients and constants you find a formula 
That's a formula to find x-intercepts. That's all it does. Just finds x-intercepts if they happen and finds imaginary numbers if they don't. Having a negative inside your square root, this piece called the discriminant would give you an I that says you'd have imaginary or complex zeros and not real zeros. Um, so anyway, we'll practice actually using that next time. We'll talk about the discriminant and what you would get out of that. I'll come right back with, with an alternate proof. I'm going to race to about right. Now, nah, start over. Okay, so if you're interested, here's a slightly more traditional way to, to show uh, the quadratic formula from completing the square. What it does, it's, it's, it's somewhat the same. The only thing that happens here is we divide by a right away to get rid of it, and we have a fraction from the very beginning, and then we complete the square sort of the same way. And so what that would look like, if you divide everything by a, well, then that becomes x squared plus b over ax plus c over a, you notice I'm separating that real quick, uh, equals zero. And that gives us a fraction from the start, which take it or leave it, that's just the way that we, we have to have that. And then we complete the square with the same exact thing. So we have our b over a, we know that our b over 2a and b over 2a is what's going to be given to us. If we multiply that, that's b squared over 4a squared. This is what needs to happen to factor as a, a perfect square trinomial, but we're missing that piece. And so that is what would get added. That's what would get added here. But you can see, because we divided by the a, there's no distribution now. 1 times b squared over 4a squared is exactly what you'd subtract. And that's the reason why some people prefer this method, is because a little bit easier to see that. Also, you can get a common denominator pretty quickly. You don't have to mess around with it at all. So this is factorable as x plus b over 2a squared. We know that's factorable because we set it up. We added this constant so that it would factor as that. Then finding the common denominator, we know that we want 4a squared. So that's 4ac. Find the LCD 4ac over 4a squared. And then we get everything on one side besides that perfect square. And you can kind of see it come together after this. If we add b squared over 4a squared plus 4ac over the same fraction, we're going to get that, that exact same fraction. Taking the square root with a plus and minus. We get this x plus b over 2a. On the right hand side, we get this plus or minus. Square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a because we, we did the same exact thing and that's it's the same from here. So we subtract b over 2a. We put it on one fraction due to that really nice common denominator. And we're done. That's a quadratic formula. Just a slightly different way dividing by a first. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit cleaner, but I gave it the first way because that mimics exactly what we did in the previous video. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I explained where the quadratic formula comes from and how um, what it's used for. So next time we show how, it, how it's used uh, and uh, exactly how to fill that thing out and use it properly. See you for the next video.